I'm so sick in the mind when it comes to basketball. I used to like put my sh my feet in their shoes to if I could get <laughs> a bit of like what they had yeah, 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 to yeah, yeah. bring to yeah, me. Yeah. And my dad was like, that, that don't work. You just got to put the work in. But it was just like <laughs> that type of stuff I really enjoyed being around. And, you know, the curse about everything was, you know, as I was going on playing um, in high school and getting my accolades and getting all these awards, a lot of people was like, oh, he only getting that because of who he is. And Welcome to No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. I'm Mike Botticello today over there on the couch. Of course, we got Gilbert Arenas. On the other part of the couch, <laughs> we have John Lucas the third. John, welcome to the yeah, show. Thank you for having me. Gil, this is an interesting thing that I think people have to respect. When you come up as a coach's son, we've never really got into that before. I think we've had some people that maybe came up that way. But John, for you, that's definitely part of your, your path and your story. So let's get into that. How is that a gift and a curse? Oh man, um, the gift was you got access to just about any and everything when it became when it came to basketball. You know, um, growing up, you know, being a ball boy ever since I was four years old. So I was always around legends and soaking everything up as I can. Um, you know, taking pictures. With, my dad had this thing. I had to take pictures with everybody, like Larry Bird. And we <laughs> was in town. I had to take a picture with Larry Bird, take a picture with Dr. J. And back in the day, those were the, yeah. the film cameras. <laughs> the film cameras. So he had, yeah. <laughs> film and do this, for, right? For sure, for sure. So he'll have, like, the photographer or whoever the Rockets was at the time always take that picture for me. Um, so Manute Bow, mm -hmm. Charles Barkley, just everybody, mm -hmm. any and everybody. Um, and I have them all in my house. Still to this day, they hung in my game room. But just like playing one-on-one -on -one against Michael Jordan, Bird, like being like that involved and not really looking at it. Like I just thought of him like, oh, you know, there's Mike. <laughs> like, I used to call him by the first names. <laughs> um, it was just cool. It was an experience like, you know, working with all those guys. And then the older I got, I got to compete against guys like, Stephon Marbury, Steve Francis, Katino Mobley, Allen Iverson, Damon Stoudemire, um, Muggsy Bowes, stuff like that, both training and picking up games and, you know, giving them, like, giving me jewels and stuff, of, you know, because they knew I wanted to make it um, and I was really dedicated to the craft of basketball. So they would just saw something in me and it would just help me. I always used to get picked up right away as soon as I walked in the gym. I didn't care if it was a college kid in there that was trying to make the NBA. They knew my work ethic and they knew how hard I went. So I never had to like wait my turn to play. I used to get on right away. So that just made me even more confident. So when I played high school, high school to me was easy. I'm like, if I can hold my own against mm -hmm. these guys, mm -hmm. then I'm not really <laughs> fearing nothing in high school, honestly. But just the stories I have, you know, being in a barbershop with Michael Jordan and people in the south side of Chicago figuring out Mike was in mm -hmm. the barbershop mm -hmm. and flooded outside, had to be police escorted. It was during the time of um, my dad was playing for the Milwaukee Bucks at the time and he was playing the Bulls in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, and then they went to the Eastern Conference Championship and played against Bird, the Milwaukee did, and Bird ended up giving me his jersey after the game. And that's... In the NBA, their jersey was made out of cotton then. It was like by Russell. Mm -hmm. Sweat stains and everything. <laughs> I still have it. You know what I'm saying? Um, every pair of Michael Jordan shoes signed and autographed that he's played in, I have. Hmm. Um, I'm not just You no thought you had a collection. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but it was just more of like, I'm so sick in the mind when it comes to basketball. I used to like put my, sh my feet in their shoes to if I could get a bit of like what they had yeah, 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 to yeah, yeah. bring to yeah, me. Yeah. And my dad was like, that, that don't work. You just got to put the work in. But it was just like that type of stuff I really enjoyed being around. And, you know, the curse about everything was, you know, as I was going on playing um, in high school and getting my accolades and getting all these awards, a lot of people was like, oh, he only getting that because of who he is. And, oh, he only getting that because of this. But I... Average 30 in high school, led the whole state in scoring, logged mm -hmm. in over 3,700 points in high school, 
Mm-hmm. It was just like, nah, I put the work in, but my whole thing <laughs> was just about protecting my name. Mm-hmm. So I used to hear stuff all the time and Gil's son is probably going to go through the same thing <laughs> I went through because um, we have the, you know, your last name, whole weight. Mm-hmm. So um, parents used to be like, oh, you know, you know, you playing against today. You know, if you if you if you go out there and do him, we you know we can make our name. We can do it. And my whole thing was to protect my name. So you wasn't gonna make a name off of me. I was I was seeking to destroy, and I wanted to show you the reason why I am who I am. Mm-hmm. And that was just my. I took that mentality into everything, life, business now, and even in college. Yeah, I think what you said right there is first thing. It opens doors for you in a way, right? And then the other is that you're hunted. You know, and I think if you get ahead of that and know, like, all right, they're coming for me, it's something you can definitely, you know, I think relate to. It's like, when don't let them come for me. Or when they get here, I'm going to be here. Did, did you actually with me. play for your dad? No, I never played for oh, my dad. <laughs> so my dad never, my dad didn't start training me. Like, people thought my dad trained me. Mm. My dad was a dad. Uh-huh. I had other trainers. <laughs> okay. Uh, so my dad was like, let me play every sport. I play hockey, lacrosse. Baseball, indoor soccer, everything until I got to high school. And he was like, okay, we're going to focus on two sports. And that was tennis and basketball for me. Mm -hmm. And then he started getting more hands-on with me my sophomore year in high school. So I I had a shooting coach. Mm -hmm. I had uh, RIP to my godfather, Grant Gonzalez, who played in the league for a little bit, who was really hands-on with me in the gym with me every day. And those was my trainers until my self until my sophomore year. And then they kind of like they put it all together. Mm-hmm. It was like he was almost, we call it gumbo. He was getting a little bit of this and a little bit of that. <laughs> and I didn't know at the time what I was getting mm-hmm. until he put his final touch on there and it all just came out. You know what's so funny? And that's and I, I when when parents asked me, I was like, go through all the trainers you can possibly go through because Everyone has something different. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, that's when I let my son train. Yeah, do, do y'all, do y'all. I I will finish it off because I, right. I know what it takes to, you know, but everybody else, feed them, feed them. Every, because everyone has their own knowledge. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Everyone mm-hmm. sees the game different. You know, you see it from a smaller guy's perception. So you know how to, do, right. you know, do all that extra stuff. I'm old school with it because I know it works, <laughs> but I also throw a little flair into it too so it doesn't feel like it's so old. Because one thing I know about basketball is it has not changed, mm-hmm. right? The object is to put the ball in the hole <laughs> and at the guard position, you got to know your spots. So to me, I'm really big on being efficient, right? So I don't let any of my guards shoot top of the key threes. Mm-hmm. And the reason is we don't take too many top of the key threes because that's the trailing big man. Yeah. That's the guy who takes the ball out. So let's get so efficient for these four spots, wing and corners, because most of the time that's where you're going to be in the offense and that's where you're going to start the offense. Only time you shoot a top of key shot and Gil <laughs> knows if it's a hand grenade or the shot clock going yeah. down. One full flat. <laughs> or, you know, the game's on the line and that's where you get the ball. Mm-hmm. But why not get so consistent? So, so Derrick Rose and I, good friends, but like one of my really good friends, his son actually trains with me, PJ, um, teammates in Chicago. Then I end up becoming his coach in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, oh, he can't shoot, he can't shoot. To me, I'm like, nah, he can shoot. I done seen it. But nobody a- actually ever toned in on his shooting, right? Shooting to me is a lot of repetition. Mm-hmm. Like you think you, yo, okay, I shoot hundred shots. That's not, that's nothing. <laughs> yes, yes. Like me growing up, my dad had me shoot 1500 sh- mates, not shots, 1500 mates in the morning, hmm. 1500 mates at night. Mm-hmm. That's 3K a day. <laughs> yeah. Seven days a week, I'm getting up 21K for the week. Mm. So it's like riding a bike. I know mm-hmm. that's music to your ears too, though. Yeah, yes. It's not just reps, it's makes. Though, it's too. makes. So I count makes. Like we until you make a hundred in that spot, you <laughs> might shoot two hundred. You right, might shoot two fifty. Yeah. But I'm all about makes. So it's a being efficient. So Derek and I used to all we argue, argue, argue. So I just pulled up 10 clips of our last 10 games, right? Mm-hmm. And we sat down, we watched, I said, 
How many shots you shot from the top of the key? Because he used to get mad. Why we don't shoot top of the key threes? Why we don't get shot <laughs> yeah. from the key threes? I said, okay, we played 10 games. There you took a total of five top of the key shots. And it's because nobody wanted their shooting percentage to get down. So they hand grenade you the ball <laughs> mm -hmm. while you were trying to get back on defense. Mm -hmm. And you end up shooting it. I said, but these 10 games, you took a total of 60 shots from these four spots. So once he saw that and realized that's all we worked on, and he, that year in Minnesota, he shot his highest percentage from the three his whole career. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's, that's the key sometimes when you're trying to, because you can see it and you're trying to tell someone like, yo, you don't, and they're like, nah. Like, and then you have to actually show, show them. It. Like, listen, that's, and I, I, tell, I tell parents too, coaches, videotape, Video videotape is so important because you can you can stop everything in real time. Like, hey, hold on, you said what? You shot? No, this is where you shot. This is what you right. actually did. <laughs> this is where that person actually was. So the person can actually see their mistake in real time instead of you just yelling it. Because if you're yelling it and it didn't register how it went in their head, it's you're gonna sit there and do that. So I say you always videotape and you say, all right, here's the clips. What were you thinking here? And let them look at it, and they're like, oh, "I thought he was gonna." Okay, long as you, you, you know, long as you recognize it to understand how to get better at it, you know. So I, the same thing I, I do in mine. Look, we're gonna videotape. You're gonna play. We're gonna videotape, and then there you go. Watch it yourself. Like you shooting on the way down. I don't know what that side step was. You know? <laughs> like you side step, he hit the ball. I don't know. Right. You know, and and now now going the back and work the right way. Right. You know, so that's all you can basically do. Yeah, and like uh, every coach always say, film don't lie. Uh -huh. <laughs> so tape don't lie. Tape don't, numbers film, don't lie. Right. right. You have those two things. The numbers with. lie. You can manipulate those. Well, <laughs> well, <I'm just> saying, <laughs> you can manipulate those. You, uh, in, in Wait, some if you, you want to get your message across, you can yeah. just look at it here, and, like with field goal percentage. Too. Yeah. Just say, like, yo, you're knockdown shooter. You went five for eighteen. Right. Yeah. It was so funny. Someone, uh, I, I, I did that with someone once. Right. And because I was like, man, he's a bad shooter. I'm like, no, he's he's it's, he's not. I, I think we're just putting him in positions that's not beneficial to him. Yes. So I said, so I started doing my little stats and realized spot shooting. Oh, he was gold money. Move horrible. <laughs> but since all of our plays was on a move. He looked like a really bad shooter when he was just a knockdown flat spot shooter. Yeah. And I said, you know, so, you know, he's sitting with a 13%, you know, but his spot shooting is 80%. You know, it, I was like, well, we just might want to just, he's not a Cal Culver. Right. You know, <laughs> he's not a Cal yeah. Culver. You just sit your ass in the corner and, you know, be atmosphere right now until we, you know, and, and you know, so sometimes you have to really, I was just saying, sometimes numbers do lie, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you have to mm -hmm. really look at and see what's what. Right, exactly. So, good example for D. Rose, you can look at that for him and say, and I think that's the job of a coach too, is like, I'll look at these numbers for you and tell you, like, actually, you are 75% from the corner. That's your strength, or, you know, or mm -hmm. mid range or whatever. But, like you said, those hand grenade shots, yeah, that's a bad Yeah, idea. I would never, because when I was a player, I used to hate when they used to bring your little, when analytics started coming mm -hmm. into the game mm -hmm. and they'll bring you the sheet of paper and they'll show you. I used to hate looking at it. And then now while I'm playing the game, I'll be wide open. I'll be like, oh, I can't shoot that. My percentage <laughs> that. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. now percentages can really keep you in, in the league longer. Yo, I, I listen, <laughs> this is a true story. I'm not going to say the person's name. I'm not going to say the person's name. But he used to irritate, it used to irritate me because he's, an amazing shooter, and every time I pass on the ball, if he wasn't wide he wouldn't open shoot. by himself, he wouldn't shoot, shoot the ball. He wouldn't shoot. And it, it just like, yo, shoot it! Like it's like, like I'm getting double shoot it, right? And no, so I hit him one day like, yo, no, what what's going on, bro? I don't want to mess up my shooting percentage because it's my contract year. I said, say what? Mm. <laughs> he was like, it's my contract yeah. year, you know? Yeah. Be, and he, this is what he said. He said, I'm in a different situation than you are. See, you can put up shots and you're 32, 20, that, that, is, your, that is your gold. Right. My gold is my percentage. I can get your money 
or close to your money with percentage because I'm not going to get as many shots. See, I'm third, fourth, fifth option. So, you know, I got to make sure I'm in the 90, you know, 60, you know, seven rebounds, 80% from the free throw lines, 30. And I'm sitting here like, and sure enough, yeah. sure enough, motherfucker average like 8, 10. Because it's like, well, if he shot more, he'd be averaging this and this and this and this. And, and boom, got a big contract. And I'm sitting here like... I always made it a point. See, I was a volume shooter. I didn't care about percentages. Yeah. I just knew I was a bucket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I knew that, uh, and the coaches that I had my best seasons with, knew who I was as a player, mm -hmm. right? So I was always based my career on plus and minus. So I didn't really look at points. Mm -hmm or my assists, or turnovers like this. If I was in the plus and minus, like I think I hold one of the highest for efficiency. Cause every time I was in the game, we all, my the minutes I was on the court, I was in the plus. Mm -hmm. So that means he's bringing something positive every time he steps yeah. foot mm -hmm. on that court. So I think that's what made me pan out three more years in the league. Longer. So, so you used the, did you? Use? Yeah, and the older I got, that I used it. I was like, okay, the... when I'm in the game, are we down by 30? Mm -hmm. And you know, trash minutes, and uh -huh. they throw you in there? If I cut that lead to 15, mm -hmm. I'm a plus well, 25. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I start playing the game like that. So I was like, okay, we up 20. I got to keep this lead. Oh, we got to <laughs> build this lead. Because mm -hmm. if you lose a lead, now you a negative. And that's how I start. So when I used to get the stash, you had to go like, <laughs> okay, plus 25. Plus 25. I'm cool. <laughs> oh, I was over five from the field. I'm cool on but that. You know what's so funny? And when people say the game inside the game, people don't realize that those are the games that's going inside the games on contract mm -hmm. years and just anything like some like like you. I don't I don't care about. If I miss shots, I don't care right. about over. When I got in, this is what we did. That's all I care about. You know what I mean? Because when, when it's negotiation time, they're going to be looking at me like, what did you bring? <sighs> okay, so I brought, I, right. I know I averaged two points. Cool. Cool. But, I, <laughs> but when I got in, this is what we did. Every single game, I am a efficient plus. So when I'm on the court, no matter if I'm making it, we're getting better. And... We gotta remember, coaches, general managers, they don't understand the details sometimes in what a player brings. All they know is, oh, he only averaged two points. Ah, he's getting them. Like, wait, hold on, woo. Hold on, I think I'm worth uh, five million because of this, this, this. Right. And they're like, oh, he didn't. Did you? Okay. Yeah. They, I mean, there you go. <laughs> I mean, you think about it like, man, like, it's just crazy how it all happens like that, right? So, the um, point of the plus and minus, like when I, the playoff year in Chicago, right? D, uh, I had a hell of a year that year. I think the lockout year, I was, I was playing basketball, like mm -hmm. Rucker Park, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, New York, Pro-Am, Nike. I averaged 50 in that. I was there when K, I played against KD when he scored 66 at Rucker. Mm -hmm. I scored 25, <laughs> but it completely washes that 25 away, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> So then the next night, we play KD. I'm, now it's the Nike Pro-Am at Baruch College. We play. I found out, okay, KD playing. All right, I'm locked in, <laughs> right? So we play. They had like four NBA. They had like Roy Hibbert. They had uh, Andre Barrett, KD. And I know I'm going to mess his name up, but Santiago, Santiago Gaines. Santiago Gaines. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. Santiago Gaines on that team, right? On my team, it was me. Sean uh, Singletary that went to University of Virginia mm -hmm. and a couple of other, like, you know, maybe St. John's, a player from St. John's, a couple of other local players. Oh, so you're just getting buckets there. <laughs> oh, no, I, I was locked in because I'm like, the whole night and day you hear about the 66. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm like, I was in that game. My name ain't mentioned. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was doing my thing. I was going against it, but. <laughs> I was doing my thing. Yeah, I was like 25 at the record. Like, I, you know, I got my nickname from New York, Cool Hand Luke. Like, I, I'm solidified. Uh -huh. So I was like, I'm really going to solidify it tonight. Mm -hmm. 
right? Because basketball to me is about competition, yeah. right? I hate when people run away from competition. I hate when people don't want to play against or don't match up. I done seen it in the league. People been scared of each other. I done seen, Yo. People, I done seen people fake injuries. Fake injuries. Like yeah. some of your favorite players, I done seen when D. Rose was MVP year, D. Rose, and D. Rose was D. Rose. I done seen people catch the rose flu. Hmm. Yeah. I, we call, people think that's not, people think no, that's fake. We, and, we used to joke about it. Because me and D Rose sit right here <laughs> and we'll, we'll go out there. I used to start, and I knew when somebody was kind of shaking of them or something. So, hmm. you know, like I knew my role. Yeah, For yeah. what reason? They don't want to be embarrassed? Man, it's a. It's a I don't know. It's don't competition. Know. It's like, competition. Yeah, but you would just think if you're. I mean, if you're Man. a pro, you wanna. You wanna. No, smoke. that's no. no. I'm telling no, so, everybody. Don't want yeah, that smoke. was. That was. Everybody doesn't want it, but you would think they do at that level. Nah, it separates the men from the boys. It do, but it make like so. That was my reason of coming back at Nike, and I was like, I bet. So I scored sixty that night. KD had forty six, <laughs> but we lost in overtime. Mm-hmm. Right, but my point, like New York, they was like, and I'm the 13th man on the mm-hmm. roster, 14, 15 man on the roster, of Chicago, and my whole point was like, people was like, man, how's he in the league? How's he in the league? Woo woo. All right, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna show you, mm-hmm. but it's levels to this, right? The levels is you got D Rose, you got this and that, got that. Like, if you're an ultimate pro, and it's no that saying you don't think you can compete with them, right? It's just saying you know your role. Yeah. And a lot of people at that position I have been don't mm-hmm. understand their role. They want to be the man, mm-hmm. right? But at that position, you got to stay ready at all times because you don't know when that opportunity mm-hmm. going to come. And if you're not ready for that moment, you might not get another opportunity mm-hmm. or you might get that pink slip in your locker yep. and you see somebody else coming in and you up out of there. So my whole thing by staying in the league was always staying ready. Mm-hmm. I don't care if I didn't play that game, this game, that. But if I didn't play for 11 games and that 12th game came, I was ready. And that's one of my niches that I pride on was other than the plus and minus of being efficient mm-hmm. was also staying ready. So I always stay with my routine, right? So when the second year after we lost to the Eastern Conference Finals to Miami, mm-hmm. you know, we respected to go back the following year. But unfortunately, you know, Very a different. lot of injuries and stuff. So... That was my first NBA start. Scored 25, eight and eight against the Wizards. Mm-hmm. I was just like, <laughs> I'm not going back to China. Mm-hmm. I'm not going back overseas. Mm-hmm. Like, I shot the ball like 28 mm-hmm. times that day. <laughs> As you should. And cut, but we, I was the only point guard. Mm-hmm. CJ was hurt. Oh yeah, yeah. Derek yeah. was hurt. I played 48 minutes. They had to give me an IV after the game. Haven't played 48 minutes since I left <laughs> China. <laughs> right? So. I remember I turned down a shot to pass a Cal Corey. And Tibbs was like, I will play Ronnie Brewer at point guard if you turn down another shot. I said, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I shot that thing. Every time he was like, if you see the rim, let it go. But Tibbs knew me as a player. Chilling, chilling. My agent was like, there's a team in China that wants you. I was like, I don't you know. <laughs> so I threw a number out there. I was like, a high number. Mm-hmm. That was like, I know they're not going to. For two months, I know yeah, they're yeah, not going to yeah. give me that. He was like, okay, they said, yeah. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Close, called your bluff. Called my bluff. So I was like, Yao Ming brought his old team, Shanghai Sharks, mm-hmm. who you play for mm-hmm. too. I play for Shanghai. And Yao Ming called me one day after I got released from Miami. And I thought someone was playing on my phone because mm-hmm. he never calls. <laughs> so he was like, John, this y'all. I said, oh, yeah, I hung up the phone. <laughs> calls me back. He said, no, 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 it's me, John, it's y'all, it's y'all. <laughs> I was like, what's up, big fella? He was like, hey, I, I just brought my team in China. I want you to be my point guard. And I was like, China? Like, this is before, like, yeah. I didn't know nothing about China basketball. So I was like, all right, y'all. I was like, he was like, well, how, how, how much would it cost for you? I was like, 85 a month. I just threw a number out. Mm-hmm. He was like, okay. <laughs> he was like, so I had to fly home mm-hmm. to Houston, get a visa. Woke up a day later, I'm in Shanghai. I'm like, what the? I loved it. Fans, them. 
Lovely. They make I was in Shanghai, it's like New York City on yeah. steroids. I had a driver. I had a three bedroom condo yeah. downtown. Like living like a king. My face is on the billboard everywhere. I couldn't yeah. go nowhere in Shanghai. I had a game with another nickname. I was called <laughs> Wizard because I did magic with the ball. You know, they got all kinds of. And I was like, Lucasan, Lucasan. Lucasan. <laughs> Jayo, Jayo, like Jayo. Like, I so. said the same thing. Like when I went out there, it made me fall in love with basketball again. Like they, it's like, it's all love. It's positive. It's just, positive. there's no negativity. There's, there's, so is there one catch though? You got to score. It's yeah. on volume. It, it, but if you're a scorer, it doesn't it, it, matter. It, it, but what I'm saying yeah. is like, for just, they made you feel like you were Kobe Bryant, Man, right? No, I, I called home and I told everybody <laughs> like, yo, F the league, Me? I'm <laughs> good. Okay. I said, I am good. I got every game I win, it's an envelope, yep. a K. <laughs> yeah. If I make the playoffs, that's another 70K. Bonus. If I get past the first round, that's in the, I'm counting. I'm like, did, did, that what I would make in a year yeah. at, at, in the league? In a and year, tax and it, free. And this is a couple months. Co mm -hmm. And I, I'm only there four months, so it's tax free. So I'm over there killing. I was like the only small guard there because they always kept big guards, mm -hmm. right? So my first year, I was the only small guard there. He, it was a point guard, and I had a big man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody else had two bigs. Thanks. So I was a small guard. So I was averaging like 30 some for it, but having fun with it, you know, I got commercials, I got <laughs> sponsored. I, then I got sponsored by Lee Ning mm -hmm. before B, like before BDN. I'm like sponsored by Lee Ning. It was like a new company, like, oh, they give me some bread too. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I've always been a Nike kid, but mm -hmm. in China, I just wore the, you know, yeah. wore the stuff. So they they thought that's why in if you see the clips from the New York games, I was on the sponsorship still with Lee Ning. So I had Lee Ning's on. Oh. The BDs yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, the BDs. So I had them on. So um, I'm over there. I'm like, man, forget the league. I'm cool. So I started doing my own agency. I'm like, all right, I made this. Like, if y'all want me to come back, you know, we do the numbers. I, you know, I do it. So <laughs> I, I ended up doing it. I'm flying back home. I, I, it came such a hustle to, like, not a hustle, but I, I embedded because, you know, I'm looking over there. You're going to know this and you're going to laugh. I was like, oh, you. Like, you can really take it by storm. Like, how Marbury's doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is buy into the culture. Yeah. See, when Americans get over there, they uh, you yeah, know, yeah, try to yeah. act all... I was American, like, they try yeah, to act all American. Yeah. But that, that was the thing for Marbury at that time in his life and his career. He needed that. He and then me. when he got there, he bought in because it was new. It was fresh. And you said it was all love. Yeah. That's what I said. It's like, but just hearing him, you see why... It, some guys who go over don't to China back. don't come back. Don't come back. Because right. you you were the Michael, you you were Kobe, like how Kobe and LeBron and they be chasing him down the street. And you go over there, you're the 13, 15 guy, and you watching all the fans over there, and you sitting there walking through the hotel, and then you go to China and you are that. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's hard because it's this, hard. well, the route you took, like you said, if you're the 13th, 12th, 13th guy and you're you're disengaged with the game. You need that. You want to be at the. But front. that's what I'm, saying. I'm. I'm a star in the NBA, so I, I'm, yeah. I'm. I'm getting this. Mm -hmm. When I went to China, ten times. I'm sitting here like, man, I'm good. I'm like, that's why. That's why China's my last. I'm good. Yeah. Like I'm good. Like if I didn't keep getting hurt, I would still. I'll be over there, because it was. It's. It's like I walked through the mall. Picture, 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 photo, 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 photo. Like, <laughs> just million, like, it was just unbelievable. Go to the airport. I mean, they're chasing you down. Like, yeah. like it was like, like, this is what the cold feel like. This is what Jordan Yeah, like, you get that. Well, I'm Michael feeling. Jackson out this yeah. <laughs> Like, I got that. I'm like, anything I wanted. Yeah. If I want to go to Hong Kong for a yeah. week. Oh, business class. Go. Yeah. Oh, come back. <laughs> or, you know, practice. And I was like, oh, I'm kind of sore. They uh, bring somebody in, yep. fix, fix me all up. And while all my teammates out there running around like crazy, I'm on the sideline. And I used to feel bad to yeah, do yeah. it. So I'd be like, nah, let's just do it at the condo. Yeah. And, you know, because like, I've always been like, those are my guys. Mm -hmm. I still keep in contact with all those guys that I play with in China. Like, those are my mm -hmm. brothers. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the money-wise is different. The way they make their money is different. So... 
we had mornings, roof cribs, uh-huh. and, you know, that's I used to like, hey, come on, I got it. So we like, but to me it was about bonding. Mm-hmm. And they love basketball so much over there. It's crazy. So when I used to come back, I used to be like, man, cool. Like my agent be like, oh, so-and-so wants you to bring in for a workout. It's like, is it guaranteed money? I ain't going. I'm, like, All right, I'm cool staying in China. <laughs> I'm cool. <laughs> so we, we go on doing that. So I go back my second year. So we make the playoffs and we I make the playoffs in Shanghai my mm-hmm. first year. And they ain't made the playoffs since Yao Ming left. Mm-hmm. That was eight years ago. Yeah. So Yao's all happy, you know. He got me on the movie sets with Wars Philip, like just a whole bunch of stuff. Just everything's like I'm. I'm like, yo, this is, <laughs> this is it. Yeah. This is cool. Right? Yeah, I'm like, coming basketball heaven. That's when really my NBA career just took off, like because of injuries. I got an opportunity to show what I actually could bring to the game mm-hmm. and bring to the table, and. So we're playing good, still no one team. You know, even with Derek out, we still held the best record. Like we took pride in that bench mob. Like mm-hmm. that bench mob was started with us. Mm-hmm. So we took pride in that, like one man down, next man step up. Like mm-hmm. we hold, we hold mm-hmm. us together. So we was like really, we had more bench mob shirts in the stadium <laughs> than some of the bull shirts. Mm-hmm. Like we really, like bench me, mob. Ty's Gibson, CJ, Kyle Corver. Like we really, yeah, that was a yeah, that was a, that was a solid, that was a solid. We team. really like took pride, Omer Oscar. We took pride in that bench mob. Like we was like, yeah, we the mob, like bench mob. Like, <laughs> really like, so then you know we playing and injuries are happening. Mm-hmm. So I'm playing good. You know I'm starting to feel myself a little bit. And Joe Kim Noah was like, we playing Miami. Mm-hmm. Joe Kim Noah. It's like, yo, Luke, your energy is crazy, right? If you know Joe Kim, you know how he's high and strong. Yeah? Mm. He's like, yo, humble yourself or the game will humble you. I'm like, what? All right, whatever. <laughs> All right, so we play Miami, right? ABC game. I'm coming off an 18-point game. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We playing Miami. I'm like, yeah, they, I had a, a thing. If a team cut me, mm-hmm. I was going to have a good game against them because I'm like, I'm going to make you. Yeah. Make them pay. So I was playing good. woo then the play happened. Mm-hmm. I know where this is going, Gil. Then the play happened. <laughs> so Rip Hamilton, I'm like, Rip, <laughs> back screen coming. Like, get through. Uh-huh. Back screen. Like, I'm, cause you know, Tiz, we're a defensive team, so we know somebody you gotta fall back. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm like, back team, back screen coming, back screen coming. So he don't move, he stops. So, okay, of course, I got a bag book, take mm-hmm. away, you know, that. So we boom. I'm like this, I'm backing up, you know, guard you man, like I'm doing this. So I'm like, this. they throw the ball up. I was like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, Who is that for? Yeah, right, you know what I'm saying? Like, huh? <laughs> so he, you know, come over. I didn't know he jumped over me at the time. He dunk it. Boom. They go crazy. It's like, oh, man. I'm like, ah. You know what I'm saying? He said, I didn't know he dunk, jumped over I me. I didn't know. So my whole thing was like, oh shit, you dunk on me. Let me go get a bucket real quick. Uh-huh. So I'm like, take the ball out. So I'm rushing down court. Tibbs called timeout. Beep. Oof. So, <laughs> so you gotta sit there. That's the worst. <laughs> so now they like, oh, 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 like just going crazy. You know that might, you know how Miami replay, things yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, everybody got uh-huh. white on in there. Look like you had a. So we on the bench and like, I I'm like this. I'm looking at you know the circle thing. And like Joe Kim and Ty's, we all like it's just quiet. <laughs> quiet yeah, like, you know, the coaches huddle up in the middle before they come give you the game plan, mm-hmm. right? So we all look, I'm like, oh. <laughs> like this, and Joe, and like Ty's gave me this thing, like, mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, that happened right there. <laughs> so I get back to phone. I turn both my phones. I had two phones at the time. Mm-hmm. I turned both them off. I'm like, I ain't want it from nobody. Humble yourself or the game will humble you. And I and that's what stayed with me. Mm-hmm. Cause I was feeling myself. Nah, nah, you just got, you just nah, got, nah, nah. You but just got, got. got humble, right? Because I was like, I'm playing good, we winning, like, I'm starting to get recognition mm-hmm. for, like, who I always thought I knew I was, but I was also, like, kind of getting away from who I was. And, and that dunk did that? Yeah, and that, <laughs> it got me back humble, right? But I have a thing, right? It go back from, like, the Rucker part. Like, all that happened that mm-hmm. same year. When KD scored mm-hmm. 66, I was like, okay, I got to get my fade back. Mm-hmm. So now, 
We played them in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So after watching on ESPN, first, you know, number one for I don't know how long, I'm probably gonna be in the Hall of Fame when he has a picture of him <laughs> yeah, doing yeah, it. Yeah. So I circled the calendar. We played them in two weeks. I was like, I gotta get my fade back. Only thing that saved me a week later was when Blake Griffin dunked on Kendrick Perkins. Mm. Threw him yeah, in yeah, without yeah. touching the rim. That yeah, saved me, because then that yeah. became number one, right? But the whole time I'm looking at Instagram, Twitter, people are like, oh, LeBron jumped over you. I'm like, what would he do with you then? Yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, but I'm, yeah. not, I'm, like, I'm like, okay, cool. So Derek was supposed to come back from turf toe. This is how I said me and Derek are like this, mm -hmm. right? So it's like rumors like, oh, Derek's coming back for the Miami game, come back to Miami. So we go through shoot around. He kind of go through it. He looks good. Mm -hmm. So I kind of pulled Derek to the side. I was like, hey, G. I need for you to sit this game. <laughs> <laughs> and he like, what? I said, I need for you to sit this game. Cause I know if he playing, I ain't playing. You know what I'm saying? I said, I need for you to sit this game. He was like, all right, if I do, you better go kill. Go off. I said, I got you. Uh -huh. Like this is a true story. Uh -huh. So he like, ah, I think I, you know, he was like, you know, it's kind of sore still. I think mm -hmm. I'm gonna sit one. So I'm on I-95, I'm like headed to United, so I'm locked in. I'm locked in, I'm like, if he switch off on me, mm -hmm. all I see is black. <laughs> I don't see none of my teammates or anything, right? So we get to playing, ESPN game. Like, you know how you just feel like that moment, uh -huh. how you get it? Probably how you felt in the 60 point game in the Staples Center. Mm -hmm. I was like, I checked in the game. I was like, I told Mario was one of my really good friends. Mm -hmm. I said, Mario, you ain't, you ain't gonna be a f today. <laughs> and he like, cause he, he like dapped me up. I ain't even dapped hey, him. He gonna be able to f today. I said, like, he like, you was like, damn, he was all right, let's get to work. I'm like, nah, you ain't gonna be able to. I didn't shake his hand up. Mm -hmm. You ain't gonna be able to today. Mm -hmm. Come out. First shot go in. Second shot go in. Oh, he go under. Mm -hmm. Flow to go in. Jab step corner. Going 100% first half, right? Second half start, same thing. So now I'll kill him. I'm destroying Norris Cole, mm -hmm. Chalmers. So guess who they switch off on? Him? Mm -hmm. Lumber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we Tibbs is at half court corner play. I'm like, I ain't even worried about that play. <laughs> so I get it. Uh, back up. I'm on the Right side of the court, and I hit him with a, I call it wrap your leg, mm -hmm. like with cross between, kind of mm -hmm. a little set up. Yeah. So I'm like, he, he, you know, long gone. So I'm just really sizing him up and see, yeah. okay, now I gotta get my shot off. Yeah. So I hit, and I remember working on this move all summer, because everybody know I like to go right. Mm -hmm. And I started working on this one going left where it's like a hezo, yeah. hezo, then fade like this yeah. to the step, like get you off balance. I got. KD with it in the in the uh, pro am game. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Yep, I'm gonna go to that one." <laughs> go to that one. So I was like, "Wah wah 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 da da da," and I get left, and I'm like, "Jerk, jerk again," and shot like this. He go up, try to block, and go over, and I knew where the camera's at. You know, uh -huh. you know, you know where the camera's at. <laughs> and I was like, "He can't." Fucking hold me either. Like I was having an out of body experience, <laughs> right? Oh, so the helpful thing went out the window. <laughs> yeah, all out the window. Cause I was like, I got my fade back. Like now I got my fade back. It was all about the get back. So we said that's what it is. The game will humble you. So there might be a, a thing that you might know about Gil or something that you got to get into. We get the full story on. So it's time for Ask Agent Zero. So throughout the league, right, mm -hmm. it's always a rumor. You know how close mm -hmm. him and Swaggy P is, you know. Mm -hmm. And I keep up with that whole little interchange over social media. Uh -huh. <laughs> how you say you the, you the reason he acts the way he acts. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's known to be said, I need to know if this is true. Because I don't know if somebody would really do this. But knowing you and being around you for a couple of years now, I think that you would do something like this. Is it true that when y'all came back from a road trip, you got hit with a paintball or something, 
And while you going back on road trip, you somehow told them to take his, I guess he had a 745 BMW or BMW 7 Series. And did you paint it hot pink? Oh, when y'all came, <laughs> y'all came he had, back from a road trip. He had that, um, no, nah, it wasn't, he didn't have a uh, 745. What was that popular car? It was like a Challenger? Mm-hmm. Was it Challenger? Yeah, Challenger, Challenger. Charger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. Right. <laughs> he, had, okay. he had one of those, I think it was Burgundy. It was it was Burgundy. Okay. And this one, him, Dre. Um, it was him, Dre, breaking into my house, you know, shooting with paintball. Okay. So we go on a road trip. I get his keys, ship him back. So we're on a long road trip. So I get his keys, <laughs> like, you know. So you real- take the keys on the road trip. No, 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 no. We're on the road trip. I get into his room, take his keys, ship his keys back. <laughs> ship his keys, his keys <laughs> back to DC, have my boy take his car to the dealership, uh, the paint dealer, and had him repaint his car and then put it back. Brought the, sent the keys back to you. No, 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 no. Like, like when we got out the car, Perfect. no more of your keys is, <laughs> keys is, your keys is in the car. Cause I gotta what think he noticed his keys were missing. Did you paint Hot pink. <laughs> so it's true. Yeah. What was his reaction though? I don't even remember. I was gone. <laughs> I left. Yeah. You know, first one off. I'm first one off. First one off the. I'm first one off. <laughs> yeah. This whole time, like I was like, I've hit his car with my car. Then that. Sh- he played too much. Both of y'all played too much. Oh, yeah, yeah we, both say, played too much. <laughs> we both played too much. We both played too much. But with me, it's because you're looking at your double ganger, <laughs> whatever he does, I have to top it. See, I, 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 I do it so you don't want to like, respond. Doing. Like, I just want it to quit while I win. So, like, I always double, triple, quadruple down. So that's why people say, man, he, he, can't, he, he, don't, play, he don't play fair. Yeah, like I just, not, I just not. keep. Yeah, that's why I don't. I know just he, keep going until. Yeah, it's too far because I don't yeah, know. If, I, I, just I don't know if he's a doppelganger like that. It's more you're a competitor, so you're always gonna raise. No, the what bar I'm saying is, I see it. who he is, so I know he he's like me. He's just gonna keep playing, yeah. so I need to just cut this out now. I, yeah. so I just gotta cut it out. So you just painted a hot pink. Hot hot pink. Team how long? How long did he drive around DC with the hot pink car? Because a paint job is. I don't even remember. Yeah, because <laughs> we didn't we didn't know about wraps then. Because if, if if we knew about wraps, I would have just had it wrapped. No, you, the fact that you had it paint that means yeah. they had to scrape the paint. Yeah, off, yeah, the, prime it. That's what I said. <laughs> that's what I said. I didn't. I didn't. Damn, we should have. We yeah, still had uh, wraps then. I would just because I would I would have wrapped a whole lot of people's shit. <laughs> you know. You know what the funny crazy. thing is though. Nowadays, Nick would probably think that hot pink cars. Yeah, he would. Make it on brand for Spikey P. We had fun. Let's just hit it. Hey, we not, had fun. <laughs> we had we had a fun team. It was it a fun team. Sounds like you did, but I I was like I gotta ask him that question because it was something that you hear about. You're like, hey, let me tell you what Gil is like. This and that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, because I, what was so funny is like people didn't like people didn't understand me. Like I trained so much by myself. When I seen everyone, it was fun time. So I'm at the gym six in the morning. So when 11 came, fun time was that? What y'all doing? Hey, I got the work because I already did my work. I did. I did my work. No. So when when the team came, that was my playground. That was my that was my playground. I didn't That's I didn't crazy. understand that until it was too late. Like you know, people are like yo, why are you you know acting like this? I'm like. And I've been in the I've been in the gym eight hours today, you know. From this morning, this is my second time here. This is the first time I'm seeing human beings. You know, I'm happy. I'm like a kid right. now. You know what I mean? I'm not thinking about you know practice and you know we need to because uh, to me I already did I already did my duty. You know what I mean? Now is you know now is like it's, it's playtime, and that's what I didn't understand until it was too late. That's crazy. But the hot pink, yeah. I was like, I gotta I find that joint. I gotta see if that's true. I pink that joint. So you answered it. <laughs> Do this all day. 
John, we appreciate you coming on. Thank y'all for having me. You took us literally all over the globe yeah. with basketball. Um, you know, your journey from where you started as a kid. Um, and it wasn't it wasn't a curse, but it was a gift and a curse of, you know, coming up and, and look where it got you. You yeah. know, where you, you, you are today with JL3 uh, and the work that you're going to continue to do. Uh, we'd love to see it. Appreciate it. Thank y'all for having appreciate me. Appreciate it, yeah. Gil, the, the legend only grows. Yeah, I, didn't, I, don't, I don't think I got to bust his ass, though. That's all right. No, no, I was watching. I was on the bench. Yeah, yeah, I, ain't ca- I ain't catch that. <laughs> ain't catch that I fame. ain't catch that fame. <laughs> Enough people did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched <laughs> it. <laughs> watch it. Oh, one story about him. Chicago. We was training at a tax. And me and my really good friend, Will Bynum, he used to come there and work out all the time. And he had a notebook. Like, you know, an old school person mm-hmm. fold up a notebook and walk around with, he used to act like it was like the most secretive thing, right? Secretive thing. Nobody could get to the notebook. Nobody. So me and Will was like, one day we're going to steal that notebook and see what's in there. Because that's when he was Asian, you know, uh-huh. coming, doing all kinds. So Will and I, we go back late to a tax one time. He leaves a notebook in his locker. <laughs> we take it. We read it. And we looked at each other like, it's no way he's doing none of this. <laughs> he had like, Okay, spin move, this is full court. Spin move, between the legs, behind the back, pull up from half court. Gotta make 50 of those. (laughs) Come down, left hand side of the court, get to the logo, 50 of those. All these different, we like, yo, this is all kind of, we looking like, yo, he's nuts. So is there a fake notebook that you let them get? Nah, that was that's, my that's notebook. It's the notebook, but <laughs> we were just notebook. like, and it, it was just like, so the shots he was making that year, mm-hmm. we was like, and me and Will be on the phone like, yo, Will, that's what was in the notebook. We kept saying, <laughs> that was in the notebook. Like, it was like a myth between us. Like, that was in the notebook. You remember, it was like, between, between, spin move, and then he had one where when he was shot the ball, he went like this. You remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was in the notebook. Like, he <laughs> actually he practiced that. 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 <laughs> so we was like, yo. And I, that, that was like my biggest take on everything he did that year. That was the craziest year. I was like, all that was in the, the notebook. notebook. It was a style phone notebook. That, like, one of the notebooks you had in school. Like, you used to... Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, know, you turn in yeah. with your. <laughs> yes. One day we're gonna go through that notebook. I done lost that. <laughs> well, all the rest is history. Yeah, the notebook. All right, Man. well, for Mr. Notebook, Gilbert Arenas, John Lucas the third right here. I'm Mike Botticello. This has been No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. You can catch us every Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern on the Fubo Sports Network, and we'll see you next time.